In today's tutorial, we're going to take a look at creating custom annotations in Spring Boot. What's up, everyone? My name is Dan Vega, and I'm a Spring developer advocate for VMware. So I recently saw a tweet where someone was saying that the at git mapping and at post mapping annotations were a bit too long. I don't really think so, but um, I think it was kind of satire. We'll see. Um, but it got me thinking, what if you wanted to actually create an at git annotation or an at post annotation in your own project? Turns out it's really easy to do because the at git mapping and at post mapping annotations are already composed annotations. So in today's tutorial, we'll create a git and post mapping annotation and use it in a REST controller. And we'll do it right after this. All right, so here we are in a simple Spring Boot application. I didn't want to take up some time just creating a simple application. So I'm ha I have the starting code for this in a separate branch. So if you head to the repository in the description below, you'll find a branch called starting code if you want to follow along with me. So here we have a main application class. We have a model that represents coffee. A coffee has an ID, a string name, and a size. And a size goes along with the sizes at Starbucks. So we have some coffee here. Uh, we have a controller. We have a coffee controller. And in this coffee controller, we have a REST controller with a request mapping of slash API slash coffee. Uh, we create a new list of coffees. And we have three uh, methods here that are annotated with our git mapping, git mapping, and post mapping. We have an app post construct annotation, which basically says, hey, after dependency injection happens, uh, let's go ahead and run this. So we're basically just adding new three new coffees to our coffees array, our coffees list, and that gives us some data to work with. So we have a get mapping for the root context. So slash API slash coffee will return all of the coffees. If you go to slash API, oops, we got to fix this. Uh, we just was messing around with a couple things. So if you go to um, slash API slash coffee slash ID, uh, we will go ahead and return just that coffee. And then we have a post mapping for when we want to create a coffee. So this is a fairly straightforward REST controller, nothing crazy going on here. But what I want to talk about is what I mentioned in the intro. So somebody said, yeah, hey, this git mapping is nice, but it's a little bit too long. So if we look at this, the git mapping itself, um, so this is an annotation marked with the at interface. But what it is, is you can see we have a, we'll, we'll talk more about this in a second. Uh, the target is a method, the retention is uh, runtime, but it's also annotated with at request mapping. So this is actually what says, hey, um, here's the method, the, mes the method type is request method.get. Then there's a bunch of uh, different uh, options in here. So we can set a name, we can set a value, path, params, headers, and these all come from the request mapping. If you look in here, they all have those particular uh, values. So what we're going to do is just create our own annotation for git and basically copy all this because it's the same thing, right? So what we're going to do is come into this annotation package. I'm going to create a new Java class. I'm going to say this is git, and we're going to choose annotation. So the annotation always starts with the uh, target. Uh, so where, where is this annotation going to be used? So we can use it on a type. We can use it on a constructor, method, field, et cetera. We're going to actually use this on a method. So let's go ahead and set the target to a method. We're also going to set the retention. Uh, this is going to be runtime. And again, if we go into git mapping, we can copy this because we're doing the same thing, right? And because we're kind of following the git mapping annotation, we can just come in here and copy all of these. So once we do that, we can paste those in here. And essentially, we have the same thing. So now in our coffee controller, instead of using the git mapping, we can use git and git. 
Now, the downside to this is if changes are ever made to the actual Git mapping annotations, you know, we'd have to kind of adjust our annotations to match those. So we are syncing those up. But this is really a contrived example just showing you that you can do something like this. So let's go ahead and run this. Uh, I'm going to run my application. Um, oh, we have an error. Uh, big use memory cannot map coffee controller method find one. So what is this? Oh, we didn't um, do the same thing. So we just need to say slash ID and that should work. And something's listening on 8080. This is why I always run my applications first. No biggie. If you want to go ahead and find out what's running on 8080, you can say LSOF dash I and port 8080. So we're going to kill that process, um, which is 96417. Now, if we come back over here and run, this should run OK, and it does. So now what we can do is we can go into our controller and let's just test this endpoint. So let's test this endpoint. We can use the built in HTTP client here in IntelliJ, and that should do us well. And if we go look at this, we get three coffees back. If we want to test a particular one, we can say two, and we get our coffee back. And if we want to go ahead and add a new one, we see we get a 201, so it was created. Oh, we're still using post mapping though, so let's fix that. So let's come in here and create a new annotation. We'll call this post. This is an annotation. So again, our target is going to be method. Our retention is going to be runtime. And our we're going to basically use request mapping with method is equal to post. And then what we'll do is we'll just come over here, go into the post mapping, copy what's in here, and here, save. And now we should be able to change this to at post. And again, I'm gonna go ahead and restart this. And then we'll go ahead and run our uh, test here. So let's go to our request. Um, Actually, we already have one, sorry. So let's run this one and see if everything works. Okay, so we have a 201, so it should have been created. So if we go over here and just look at all the coffees, uh, we should see that we have four, and we do. So cool, nothing special, uh, but, you know, it just kind of shows you that um, some of the composed annotations that are in Spring Boot are pretty simple. They're just uh, building on the foundation that was already there with request mapping. So again, if we wanted to do something similar in our applications, we can. So in this case, you know, we just created an at get annotation and an at post annotation. And now we can use those in our controllers instead of the at get mapping and at post mapping. So just a little fun, ha having a little fun today, saw that tweet, thought um, that would be something interesting that we could take a look at. So again, if you're kind of new to Java, annotations uh, may be different. Uh, if you are new to Java and Spring and you're not quite sure what annotations are, let me know below and I can create a video on that and, and kind of walk through annotations in Java and why we use them. Um, I'd, I'd be happy to put that together. But if you are looking to create your own annotations in Spring, it's this easy. So if you found some value in this video, friends, please go ahead and hit that thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and as always, happy coding.